the way we've described the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process, and of course, since that computes the QR factorization, therefore, how to compute the QR factorization, um, involves a lot of indices. And our experience is that if we can just stay away from those details, it becomes easier to see what the algorithm is. So let's see how we can do that. Well, remember that what we really did was we focused on the column indexed by k under the assumption that previous columns had been processed. So what does that really mean? All columns to the left of this bar had been processed. All columns to the left of this bar, all the columns of q, had already been computed. And all of the elements of R in this top left corner also had already been computed. And then what we said was, well, to compute the next column of Q, what we had to do was compute all of these coefficients right here. And then with that, we could update a K to compute the component orthogonal to it, well, to Q0 through QK minus 1. And then we could compute the length of that, normalize by that, and end up with the desired new column of Q. Notice that inherently we're talking about regions. So the way we like to explain this is that this particular part of A, we're going to label as AL, A left, and this as AR, A right. And similarly, we can call this Q left, Q right. And then we can summarize this as R top left, R top right, R bottom right. And now what we can say is A left has already been processed. Q left has already been computed. R top left, left has already been computed. The other parts still need to be computed. <clears throat> so, in an algorithm, we could say, well, we want to compute A equals QR, so we start by partitioning A into left and right, Q into left and right, and R into top left, top right, bottom right, where A left initially has no columns because no columns have been processed, Q left has no columns, and our top left initially is 0 by 0. So then what? Well, then you can say we're going to iterate while the number of columns in A left is less than the total number of columns in A. And what we do at each step is we say let's instead view this matrix as A0, which is the part that corresponds to A left, but let's take the right part, expose the first column of it, and then call the rest A2. Okay. That allows us to identify the current column. Now, you may get confused between this A1 and the A1 if we index like this. And there you just have to remember that in this notation, A1 is the current column. So really, this identifies AK for an arbitrary K or for the current iteration index of k. Similarly, we can say QL we're going to relabel as Q0, and then QR we're going to expose the current column of Q, the one indexed by k up here, and then Q2. And then this here we're going to relabel as R00, and now we're going to expose the next column of R, but that gets partitioned into this and that, with zeros below here. And then this gets relabeled R02, R12 transpose R22. And we actually should take this away like that. Okay, now. Notice that this is a row vector. We always use lowercase letters for column vectors, so the transpose here means that we are really just labeling a row vector, a part of a row here. Okay? 
So what that really does is the equivalent of saying, let's focus on this, this, and then these parts right here. This and that. Okay? And in our algorithm, I've spelled that out here as well. Okay, now, once we have computed these entries and that entry of Q, and we've processed this column of Q, that column of Q, and this column of A, then we can move forward. Then our left part of A includes that column that we have just processed, and the same thing for Q, and the same thing for R. So this is really a way of indexing into the various matrices without exposing all of the individual entries. Okay. And then we say, okay, wait a minute. The way this was computed was really this part of the matrix, Q0, Hermitian transpose times the current column of A. So, R01 those are all the coefficients, are computed as Q0 Hermitian transpose times A1. That then tells us what linear combination of the columns of Q we need to subtract off of the current column of A to compute the component of that column perpendicular, orthogonal to Q0 through, well, the, the columns of Q that we already computed. So that becomes A1 becomes A1 minus Q0 times these coefficients that tell us what linear combination to take. And that is the perpendicular part of A1. Then we compute, that's a row. Then we compute the length of that perpendicular, that orthogonal part, and then we compute Q1 as A1 perpendicular divided by rho 1, 1. So now we have a way of expressing an algorithm for computing the QR factorization that focuses on the regions of the matrices that we should be concerned about and that because the QR factorization is equivalent to performing the Gram-Schmidt process, at least this algorithm for computing the QR factorization is. This here also captures an algorithm for executing the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process.